This is DJ Maldrit with KCSC Santa Cruz, and I'm here with Vanessa Silverman and Carissa Johnson. Let's talk a little bit about your music and the inspiration to your music. Um, I definitely went through a big phase um, when I first started playing guitar where I just listened to female fronted bands from the 90s and um, I was just like, I want to do that. Like that sound is like hitting me. Like I felt it or the gits are a big influence. Um, and uh, that's a lot of reason why Vanessa and I connect too. We're both into bands like that, like L7 and uh, bands from that time. and. Uh, Definitely, people definitely can cite those as influences when they hear us. I would say the reason like I first initially picked up guitar was because of Nirvana um, and bands like that. I was growing up in Hawaii at the time, so I didn't like have TV or radio. But I had some friends whose, um, you know, dad or mom might have like, uh, you know, a few like, you know, grunge CDs kind of style bands like uh, Alice in Chains, Nirvana, Pearl Jam. Um, or some 90s punk bands, but those were bands that were really influential for me, especially kind of like not at first knowing what they even looked like, but the sound was so kind of captivating and kind of expressed the feeling that I had as like, you know, even before I was a teenager growing up. So um, that would definitely be like one of the biggest influences. And then I'm also a producer engineer, so I'm very much interested in listening to a lot of pop and hip hop and country blues and different production style things so and for you Vanessa did living in Hawaii affect like your emotional resonance with those artists yeah well you know it was interesting because I remember reading about like bands in Seattle or like bands who were from places that were really cold or like the weather was restricting so a lot of people were either inside like playing a lot of music because it was like always rainy outside or, or whatnot well in Hawaii there was like not like as a teenager like before then like I mean I couldn't drive we rode bikes and like the island lifestyle or or whatever is a lot more free or you know different or maybe I like searched stuff out like got way more creative like I remember we were early adapters of the internet and I remember finding a rare site of like Nirvana and like a few other bands that Geffen Records didn't know about and like taking my tape recorder and like my phone and downloading this one song that took 24 hours but like so stuff like that you're just like creative like going to the library and finding like old magazines or like you know ordering stuff from I ordered stuff from Columbia House so I, I really had to seek it out or like create my own kind of music or like you know where it wasn't like given to me I didn't have like a lot of choices where I had to like really look for it um, but I was also forced to in a a place like that where there was not tons to do unless you were like a surfer you know into a lot of outdoors which at some points or another like teenagers are kind of into and sometimes you know not like you know more interested in the guitar or um you know got my surf on and then was like over it (laughs) it's like give me the city so yeah and carissa how about your youth um i'm from a town just outside of boston Um, So I've grown up there for my whole life, and I just recently moved out. Um, So I've definitely been influenced by a lot of Boston bands that came out from around the 70s as well, and that had success in the city, Um, or bands that broke out for a little while, or like just like some Boston acts like the Lemonheads and Juliana Hatfield, the Neighborhoods, stuff like that. Um, So I always looked up to those bands, but my dad was a big influence on me with like his influences were a lot of the 70s stuff. He was super into Led Zeppelin. Uh, the Beatles, and I went through a a phase when I was real little just getting to know all the Beatles stuff. Um, The songwriting, the lyrics always stood out, and then um, eventually I wanted to start writing lyrics, and the lyrics were always like my main thing, where like certain songs hit me. I remember having my Discman and like walking around just listening to one song by XTC, and um, that was one of my dad's favorite bands, and I just found this song, and I'm like, I need to listen to this only. Then I was just like, I I wanna do this, I wanna put these lyrics that I'm writing to melody and how do I do that and then my dad taught me guitar so having him in the house and like being able to help me learn my way around music was super helpful Um, and my dad's definitely a big influence on me Um, he played in bands and um, just we've always been kind of interested in the same sort of music and vibe definitely a big influence growing up and then being in Boston for so long has inspired me to get out and do a lot of touring and 
when I met Vanessa, we ended up doing just everywhere in the U.S. and touring so much, and it's been, like, a whole new boost of inspiration. Um, so definitely a lot of, like, roots stuff, like, like kind of, like, my roots in Boston, being influenced by that, but then also, like, there's so much in L.A. I want to experience, and, like, all those bands that I love, like, the Runaways and, and bands that came out of L.A. Um, want to do, want to see what that's all about, too. And do both of you have any commentary on the current L.A. scene? Um... I think we'd probably, it, it would be cool to hear Carissa's insight because, like, I've been around the L.A. scene for so, so long, um, aside from, like, the touring, which I did for, like, the past three years, pretty much, but just coming in every couple months. Mm -hmm. um, but I've seen it um, develop a lot um, over time, and it's interesting with the trends or change. There's definitely a really good um, alternative grunge garage indie like female fronted scene right now um and um there's also some really cool darker um bands where it's almost like an undertone of like uh maybe the late 80s like skinny pumpy and like nine inch nails and like stuff but it's more with like a touch of blondie and like a touch of like cool like um early 2000s like yeah. Uh, it, it new wave and like it, it's an interesting thing that's really developing is uh, the indie scene is definitely thriving I feel like there's a huge threshold like um, just between like major pop artists and being the business versus like actual bands and a scene there and stuff like that but it's really thriving and it's been cool to see touring around the country so many times the different scenes compared to the LA scene and how everyone kind of treats it you know, a little bit differently, but um, I don't know, Chris, do you want to add? Yeah, um, that? from what I've seen so far, there's just so much diversity in LA. We're like in Boston, it's such a, it's more like a big town. It's not really like a city to me. It's like, it's just this like, you know, it's a city, but there's just, everyone knows everyone. It's like Portland, Maine is like that, Rhode Island, um, where it's just like everything's really small and like California's huge and LA is huge. Um, and I feel like between West Hollywood and East Hollywood, there's like so many different genres going on where I'm used to being like, okay, there's metal and then there's hip hop or like there's like little things like there's rock bands and some pop bands, but like the pop thing is way bigger in LA. Um, I think people put a lot more care into their show in LA. Bands kind of, you know, in, in Boston, there's definitely care with some bands, but it's more of like, oh, we're just going to play a show tonight and, like, wear our cargo shorts and, like, get on stage. And, like, but in L.A., it's, like, people are, like, putting, like, hours into their look, um, you know. Taking their time with branding. Taking their time yeah. with branding, <laughs> playing fewer shows. Um, but also you can do, I feel like, even more shows because there's, like, more ground to cover. And, like, I don't know, just, like, going downtown and then going to East Hollywood and going to West Hollywood <laughs> and stuff like that. But I see the division, too. Like, there's more of a division with, like, the East... East LA bands versus the West Hollywood bands or like the 80s thing that's still alive and then there's like the whole like new like kind of hipster stuff going on and, and like there's grunge stuff that's like really happening and um it's really inspiring like I feel like it's inspiring for me to be somewhere new and um see what's going on and see like so many female fronted bands kind of being pushed to the forefront and um having success in LA it's exciting for sure and going off that do you think the focus on fashion in the LA scene or just in performance art in general kind of influences both your music and or your performance? I've always been really interested in fashion. Um, I love jackets and like I used to love crazy like patterned pants and like tall boots and like everything like that. Um, so I'm definitely in still very inspired by that. Like I see a lot of like Bowie-esque stuff in LA. Definitely more so than in Boston. But, yeah, we've both been, like, very drawn to, like, you know, when people put a lot of, like, effort into well, the stage like a lot, show. A lot like, of care. It's, it, it shows, like, I feel like when an artist, like, actually thinks about that. Because fashion and music really influence each other. Yeah, totally. In so many ways. But when you see an artist or band um, put a lot of, like, care or, like, feeling behind it where you actually... And you go actually think about it as a brand where you see an image or a logo of a band and a actually matches the music mm -hmm. or you like understand where it communicates really well. Um, but like, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like both of us are hugely as separate artists, like influenced by fashion. And I mean, like I, I love, um, you know, some of the designers um, that are like huge designers and then some more creative, like um, more niche 
kind of smaller designers or, or whatnot, um, where yeah. fashion does play a huge part in like communicating visually what you're trying to do musically. Because it's like, you can hear it, but the visuals have to go with it. And that, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of like marketing and stuff like that, even if you're independent, that stuff is important. Yeah. Yeah, we're both like, uh, Vanessa does a lot of artist development and I've started to do a lot too. And um, we always talk to bands about this stuff too, or like, you know, having the image. And I do a lot of like image design online too. And I'm always like, you know, like conscious of colors and matching and stuff like that, where like we have that in our heads, like when we're doing our uh, online stuff and like branding ourselves and then like thinking about helping other artists. So it's like the image is just as important as the music and like the way you present yourself and all that stuff. So when we see, we go to shows and we see bands, we're like, man, like look at how much their merch matches their stage show and their look and the sound. And like, it's like so cool to see like the whole Great package. package yeah. Cause like I've seen like, everywhere I mean like totally everywhere bands that you know all different levels all different like you know just starting out doing it for a while like just kind of in different places but seeing it all like just mesh it's like oh my god like it makes you want to stay for the whole show and um, I just saw a show um, at a barbershop they were called the Manx and I didn't know what to expect but they put all their amps on stage and it was like little arcade games like all the amps and then they went outside like just in Spanx got like blasted with paint and then came on stage and like I was so tired and ready to go home and I'm like I have to stay like they have something that I need to see and like these instruments are crazy and I was just like staying for almost their whole show like I need to go home but like this is so incredible like they're putting so much work into like how they look and how much like everyone's like what is going on that it's like interesting and entertaining I found that there's been a lot of entertaining bands out here that like put extra even thought into just their performance um, so the whole thing, it's been really cool just seeing like so many different bands and so many different parts of town that are like, wow, this is like, I'm seeing a show, like a real show. It's not just like I'm like here just kind of like listening to the music. It's like the music, the image, the experience, like the interaction. So it's really cool. It's cool too to circle back to what you were saying about like, um, like fashion. It's like you think about like artists like um, Lady Gaga or whatever who, mm -hmm. you know, make some designers known or who embrace like certain fashion where they kind of work together and stuff like that or you think about a lot of classic artists who kind of put a lot of thought in, into that hence like and, you know david bowie and stuff like that yeah but um yeah totally yeah if coco chanel is listening <laughs> so. <laughs> sponsor vanessa so being on the road together i'm assuming y'all have a lot of time to have conversations with each other yeah totally some long drives <laughs> if i'm not eating <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to totally. Yeah, we've definitely spent a lot of time together. We've packed probably three years worth of conversations in the past one year. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's interesting because I, I feel like when, when I first met Carissa, I was on tour in Boston, and I was just, I literally had been living on the road, going from tour to tour to tour, and then in between that, like, recording bands and stuff like that. So when actually, like, being on the road, I would just when I'm not driving, I'd be like just working, like just like promoting, doing press, mm -hmm. doing like everything. So it was kind of like, like it, up till now, it's been just literally all surrounded by music or travel. And like, um, I think, you know, so much so that like, if you're on tour with certain people, it's like you get really close and like there is a certain, um, I think bond with any bands or um, people who tour together because it's such a weird lifestyle and such a small space. It's like, um, I think outside of touring and like I'm kind of, I'm an outgoing person but I'm also quiet and like space but when you are doing music you are around a lot of people and I think it's important to like be, um, we talked about like up, up to date with like current events and talking about stuff that's important or like we both really want to change the world and help influence people in a positive way so it's like coming together with another artist or if you have bandmates or um other bands and doing that and like working together because it's not like one band or artist who's going to change the world you know so but yeah i mean we talk about normal stuff and a lot of like a lot of Plans. music yeah related stuff and um yeah i mean it's kind of like surrounded by music you know everything kind of evolves around around that stuff and also kind of ways that we can like 
you know, improve everything. We do also with like helping other bands and stuff too. And also we, we do a lot of like other work on the road as well. Like we're like, we'll have phone calls at various times. We're trying <laughs> to like schedule around each other of like, okay, you call that person at three. I'll call, do my call at five. And uh, where I do graphic design work, she does consulting. Um, we're both kind of like, you know, doing not like sometimes I get my computer out while she's driving, but we'll have to like kind of find coffee shops just to like sit down for an hour, get up early like we did today and just like find somewhere and do some work, drive again. Um, yeah, because really, we really care about what we're doing. And that's mm -hmm. like, you know, we got up at 6 a.m. to come yeah. to come here so we could let people know in Santa Cruz that we care about what we're doing and your community matters to us. And we want people to come out and and enjoy the show with us and the experience because we have something to say but we also want to give something to people mm -hmm. so there's a lot of time and care and work and um, it's not an easy lifestyle to choose but it's just I feel like it's chosen <laughs> it's chosen us yeah. yeah it's chosen me and you know chosen Carissa in her own way and yeah and it all works together with like us like you know helping the radio station too we're like you know you guys need the artists we need the radio so it's like all mutual so it's like it's been really cool too, like doing a lot of radio stuff, like at colleges, like doing shows and like just talking to other artists or like radio hosts and like just seeing how the community is and this place is awesome. Like I this is my first time really in Santa Cruz, but this like cool little radio spot. I like it. <laughs> Great, so kind of a non sequitur. Yeah. But this is a question I like asking people. What's a memorable moment you've had with a stranger that you recall every now and then? Oh wow, that's a good question. Hmm. Do you have one? There was there was this guy that came up to me. I, th I think it was after a performance in Boston when I played with my band. It was my first show with my current lineup, which is like the lineup of like two years now, three years almost. And he just came up to me as like this like little Irish guy who like didn't look like he went to a lot of shows, but he just like put his hand on my shoulder and he's like, "You have a sparkle in your eye." He's like, keep doing what you're doing, and then he just walked away. It was, like, really magical. Or, like, he, like, said, like, a lot of, like, magical stuff, and it was, like, in an, a thick Irish brogue, and I was like, what? Like, and he was like, you have it. And it was like, I was like, oh, my God. Like, it, that stuck with me, where I was like, wow. Like, and then he just never saw him again. <laughs> I don't know who he was. He didn't Irish know who I was. man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do you have one? Um, yeah, I, ha I have, like, two that are kind of, like, s similar in the same range. So, like, uh, a few times when I... And those for who are listening, um, I spent quite a bit of time touring solo by myself as a woman alone. And, like, I remember a few times I've talked to people where they just couldn't believe that, like, I was a girl, like, out on the road, like, touring alone and kind of a little shocked. And one place in I played in Shreveport, Louisiana, um... I had like a off day, but I was able to get booked at, a, at like a biker bar. And when I played there, I mean, I never played street porn in my life. And um, I don't know, there may have been like five people at the bar. And um, when I was playing, one of the guys said to me, like after I played, uh, he just was so blown away that first someone from Los Angeles and a girl would be alone traveling. And like, he just said like, you know, like, the fact that you came here is so appreciated and like you put all your heart into your music and I just feel like if I can just go to these places that like don't get a lot of bands or artists and give them a little like positivity and like hope or like you know have some some sort of way of like you know making someone feel like oh wow actually I could get out of my hometown or even if I've, you know, had a career, I could go on tour or anything. So all those tiny little things really stuck with me of how I might be able to, like, encourage or help some other people um, or just give someone a glimpse of that the world is smaller than they think or there's so much to see out there, you know, so to get out of where you're from and experience life. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And going back to your music, what's your inspiration behind your lyricism? Uh, for me, it's pretty much real life experiences, just what happens to me, what I go through. 
Um, it's mostly my therapy for getting through something. Like if something happens that I can't change or that I want to change or that's frustrating me, it's my way of being like, okay, well, at least I got a song out of that situation or I can kind of like see it from a different perspective and then like be like, okay, like I'm past it now. Um, and that's helped a lot, like just kind of dealing with my own life experiences and then relating to other people who relate to the song and I'm like oh man like we both went through something completely different but we're relating through the lyrics um and uh yeah I think sometimes I'll just look at the sky and the sky will be like a really like cool color or, or like the clouds will be cool and be like I'll just feel inspired and I don't even know where the words come from but it's just from looking at the sky and then I'll get a line and then I'll go off that line and then I'll just keep going and like man that came from just like looking at the sky I don't know where that comes from, but it's just always been, like, if I can't find a lyric idea, I'm like, well, let's see what the sky looks like. <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, cool. But, um, yeah, it's just, like, feelings, I guess. Like, a lot of times, like, like early evening, I'll get, like, kind of, like, this weird, like, reminiscent, like, sad, like, feeling. I don't know if I've always gotten, and it's more, like, just kind of where I'm at, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to, like, put, put something on paper. Or I'll write about not knowing how to start a song, and then that'll turn into something, and I'll get everything out. <laughs> <laughs> I would say... Early on, w before I started playing solo music, I was really afraid to say how I was really feeling or to be really honest and open. And I think it took going through a lot to then communicate, because music was always my outlet, but to communicate exactly what I'm trying to say and not be afraid. Um, where with more recent music and like even with writing with a lot of other artists, like um, I will really try and say clearly something and be very crystal clear about it or tell my story in terms um, of the possibility of maybe if someone hears this maybe it'll help them like I struggled with my sexuality for a long time and it was really hard for me to talk about and I was like you know what if I say this maybe like someone else who is going through this will hear it and like feel better after and maybe be able to do something else in their life or like going through a really hard lonely time you know playing music and you know every kid or teenager has their moment of like you know feeling alone so it's like taking that or taking like I have a song called okay and where it was literally just about doing I wrote this like probably six or seven years ago before I started like touring kind of like crazy but really where it's about putting everything you have into something that you believe in so much and it was for me it was about no matter what I'm gonna be okay and um, I'm gonna put in everything I can into my music or saying my message or whatever so with the hopes that maybe some people will hear it and know like hey wh whatever I'm going through I'll be okay and I'll get through it so you know kind of it's like about for me putting hope and positivity through that and giving it to people. Great, thanks for the answers. <laughs> uh, let's end on a fun question. If you were a kitchen appliance, what would you be and why? Oh man, um, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> I love that. I don't know. I feel like I feel like a spatula. Because then I could just like stuff over. hang out with eggs all day. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be in life because I'd be useful. I can cut stuff. I can eat. I can even. I could cut an apple, and uh, I could use peanut butter on it. I could yeah cut up veggies. I'm vegan. <laughs> um, yeah. I bet you can do so much with a knife, even outside of the kitchen. You can do so much with a spatula too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Both are very handy. Yep. Okay, I actually do have a follow-up question. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're vegan. What's your favorite vegan treat? Oh, jeez. When I do have a vegan treat. <laughs> um, man. The middle of Oreos. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I really love... I'm super into fruit with, like, uh, nut butters. So I'm going to give a shout-out to Justin's... Um, nut butter and say that cashew butter or almond butter is awesome on fruit and I really like that where I like 
sometimes there's like some fancier like desserts that people make like vegan gluten-free cupcakes or donuts and stuff um do you guys have any local places in town in santa cruz oh yeah yeah santa cruz is very big on veganism i find awesome yeah are you vegan i'm vegetarian oh okay cool Mm. yeah yeah that's right i'm I feel like Santa Cruz, like, I've played here for a long time over the years because I'm from the Bay Area, but, um, I feel like Santa Cruz is up with, like, the healthy stuff in in a great way. For sure. (laughs) West West Coast in general, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. Cool. Thanks for the interview. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And nice meeting you, and thank you. Yeah. Totally. Thanks.